Okay, so with exponential decay this time, though, do you see how this graph um, goes, falls from left to right? Okay, so the parent function of this graph, once again, <coughs> is basically the same as yesterday. Y equals A, B to the X, but this time A is greater than zero, okay? And B is between zero and one. So yesterday, B had to be greater than one, yes? My base had to be greater than one. Today, my base is going to be a fraction or a decimal. So the re way I can tell if a graph is decay or growth is by that number that the exponent is two. So when I have an exponent that's like, I'm looking at this number right here to tell me if it's de decay or growth. I am not looking at a negative out in front or a positive out in front. I'm looking at this B part to tell if it's decay or growth. If that number is greater than one, it is growth. If that number is less than one, it's decay. Okay, so the number is either gonna be between zero and one, decay, or it's gonna be greater than one. You will not have negative numbers there. That's why we take that negative outside of it, because you never have a negative number there, okay? Um, so, with that being said, let's graph y equals one half to the x. How would I graph y equals one half to the x? Plug in numbers for x. We're going to plug in, same as we did last night, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. If I plug in negative two, what has to happen to this? It has to flip, yes. So when it flips, you get... 2 squared over 1 squared, so you get 4. four. y equals 1 half to the negative 1. What you got to do again? Flip. Flip. So you get 2 to the first over 1 to the first, which is? Two. You get y equals 1 half to the 0. You get what? 1. y equals 1 half to the first. You get what? 1 half. One half. And y equals one half squared. What do you get? Square one, square two. One half? No, square one, square two. One fourth. Oh, right. Okay. And we graph this. So negative two, uh, four, one, negative one, negative two, zero, one, a half. And a fourth. And what do you think your domain is? All the numbers. And what do you think your range is? In this case. What is my range? What did you say? Yeah, y is greater than zero. So I'm crossing the x-axis again, right? So y is greater than zero. So anytime you have growth and decay, and there's nothing added or subtracted to the x, and there's nothing added or subtracted to the outside of it, it's always all real numbers and y is greater than zero. Yes, ma'am? It does look like there. Okay, let's graph some more. Like I said, yes, sir. What are you confused on? What this right here? Because you because this is a negative exponent, you have to flip it, yes? And then you always distribute the exponent to both portions. So when you flip it, it becomes positive. So you get two squared over one squared. Try let's try this one. What does this two tell me out in front of that one fourth? What's the two tell me in front of that one fourth? It's going to stretch, yes. It's going to stretch. Okay, it's going to stretch by two units. So we're going to plug in numbers again. So once again, on your homework tonight, you're going to have lots of charts for me, yes? If I plug negative 2 into the exponent spot, I get this. What does that mean I have to do? What do you have to do with that fraction? Flip it, and then you square everything, yes? So 4 squared over 1 squared. What's 4 squared? And what's, so 16 divided by 1 is 16. And what's 16 times 2? 
32. So, do you see how exponential growth works? Look at how big that number is. Yes? Okay. So then I have y equals 2 times 1 fourth to the negative 1. What do you have to do? Flip it. Flip it. So you get 4 to the first over 1 to the first. So 4 to the first is 4. Divided by 1 is 4. Times 2 is? 8. Y equals 2, 1 fourth to the 0. Anything to the 0 is? One. So then 1 times 2 is? 2. Two. <laughs> 1 times 2. Y equals 2 times 1 fourth to the 1st. What's 1 fourth to the 1st? 1 fourth. And what's 1 fourth times 2? It's 1 half. It's 1 half. 2 fourths, which equals 1 half. And then I have y equals 2 to the times 1 fourth squared. So what is 1 fourth squared? <coughs> 1 eighth. No. 1 sixteenth. No. One sixteenth. And what's 2 times 1 sixteenth? No, 1 eighth. 1 eighth. 2 over 16. Reduce it down. 1 eighth. 1 eighth. Uh, I think I'm going to die. So then I graph this. Now look, these numbers are huge, yes? 32 and 8, that's a big discre discrepancy. I'm going to count by 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16, um, 20, if I could do math, that'd be good. 24, 28, 32, yes? But I'm only going to count this by 1s, which is fine. So, negative 2, 32, negative 1, 8, 0, 2, 1, a half, 2, 1, 8. What's the domain? All real numbers. What's the range? Well, uh, y is greater than 0. Good. Y is greater than 0. Beautiful. Um. Let's try the next one. What's the next one? Tell me. With that negative 3 out in front. It's going to uh, flip. It's going to flip. Good. Y equals negative 3 times 2 fifths to the X. Okay. So we're going to do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 again. I know you love me for that. Okay. Y equals negative 3 times 2 fifths to the negative 2. What do you got to do? You gotta flip. Flip. So that you get 5 squared over 2 squared. What's 5 squared? 25. And what's 2 squared? Four. So you get 25 fourths. Multiply 25 by 3 and you get what? 75. So negative 75 fourths. Mm -hmm. So what's that? What's negative 75 fourths? Y equals negative 3 times 2 fifths to the negative 1. You have to flip, yes? 5 to the first over 2 to the first. So what's negative 3 times 5? 15. Negative 15. And negative 15 divided by 2 is? That should be easy for you. What's half of 15? 7.5. Yeah. Negative 7.5. Now, 0 is always our favorite. Two fifths to the zero equals one. So one times negative three. Negative three. We like that one. And then I have two fifths to the first. What's two fifths to the first? Just two fifths. Negative three times two is negative six. And what's negative six divided by five? Um, um, zero point five. No, it's gonna be one point seven. What's negative six divided by five? Caden, do something productive with your life right now. Thank you. <laughs> What if I don't have Okay, and then we do it squared. So when we square two fifths, that means we get negative three times four twenty fifths, right? Mm -hmm. What's negative three times four? Twelve. And so negative twelve twenty fifths is what in decimal form, just so that everything's the same. Negative what? 12 over 25. 12 over 25, yeah. Uh, negative 0.48. Or 
work. Okay, so almost a half. Okay, so then we graph this, yes? Okay, um, the first one's 18, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 1, 2, 1, 2. So negative 2 is at negative 18.8, someplace around here. Um, negative 1 is at negative 7.5, 2, 4, 6. So about there. 0 is at negative 3. I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? It was flipped. Eddie told us it was flipped. I'm being stupid. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Uh, Okay, and here, and here, and 1 is negative 1.2, and 2 is negative half, so it should look like this. My bad, guys. Domain. All real numbers. Range. What? Nope. Yes, less than. Y is less than zero. Anna, focus. Okay, what does this tell me? Tell me about this graph. What do you know about this graph by looking at it? It stretches by three. It stretches by three. Um, and moves to the left. Moves to the left. How many? One. One. Um, and then what else? Goes down two. Goes down two. And how did we talk about graphing this last night? You put it in a box. You only focus on the three. Yes, only focus on this portion, right? Mm -hmm. And then we shift. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to only focus on that portion, and then we're going to shift. Um, let's just plug in three numbers right now so that we can get... Let's just plug in those three. How's that sound? Make it a little easier. So... When I have it to the negative 1, what happens here? Flip. Flip. So then you get 3 to the 2 over 1. So what's 3 times 2? 6. Over one. six. Yep, so 6. Y equals 3 times 1 half to the 0. You get 1, and then you get 3. Beautiful. And then Y equals 3 to the 1 half. So the first, 3 times 1 half is, no, 3 times 1 half. Should be 3 over 2, which is what? Okay, now, we graph that and then we shift it, yes? So, negative 1, 6, 0, 3, 1, 1 and a half. Okay, so my graph should look like this, correct? Mm -hmm. Ooh, maybe if I could right, that's good. Like this. Now, if I shift it, that means you told me I am doing what with this? What am I doing with that number? Moving one. So I'm subtracting one from the x spot and I'm subtracting two from the y spot, yes? So what is negative one minus one? Uh, and what is six minus two? Negative four. Negative four. Or positive four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is zero minus one? And what is three minus two? One. And what is one minus one? Zero. And one point five minus two? Negative point five. Negative point five. So then we graph these new points. Negative two, four. Negative two, four. We graph negative one, one. We graph zero, negative half. And this is our new graph. So what is my domain and what is my range? It's all real numbers. Domain is all real numbers. What's my range? Uh, y is uh, smaller than zero. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 um, it's the thing with the negative two. Um, yes, it is. Greater than negative two. Y is greater than negative two. You go off of whatever this is, that's my range. Uh, y is either greater than... That, if it's a positive facing graph, you know, and if it's a flip graph, it's less than that. <clears throat> okay? So this is literally the same thing we did yesterday, yes? Now, the other thing that we have to talk about is decay models for when you lose money. Yes? So yesterday we talked about, like, when I invest money and I'm gaining money off of stuff, 
yearly, quarterly, whatever. Well, you can lose money too, because what if I put it in the stock market? Can I lose that money? You could, yes. You could totally lose that money. So the exponential decay model for that is y equals a times 1 minus r to the t power. So same thing as yesterday, except for it's not a plus, it's a minus, okay? So that's how I know it's a decay factor, because it's a minus the rate, not plus the rate, okay? Here. This is um, a way you lose money, too. You know when you buy a car off of a lot, you automatically lose money once you start driving it, yes? Like the car is no longer worth that value, okay? So same thing with like snowmobiles and things, and that's what this problem is about. A new snowmobile costs 4200 The value of the snowmobile decreases by 10% each year. Right, an exponential decay model getting the snowmobile's value, y in dollars, after t years, estimate the value after three years. So what do I plug into that formula? Y equals what? What's your a? 4, yep, 4,200. What's your rate? Yeah, point 0.1. Point 0.1. And what's your time? Three. Well, right now, they just want the formula, step one. Then they want the three, yes. So I'm going to combine this point 0.1 to say point 0.9, right? Because 1 minus point 0.1 is point 0.9. And then 3. So tell me what it comes out to after 3 years. How much is it worth? How much is it worth after 3 years? This is the last thing we have. And then... Point 0.9 cubed and then multiplied by 4,200. 3,061.80? Yeah. Wait, 3,000? Yeah. Yes. Like this. Like that? Yeah. Okay. I was like, wait a second. I wasn't computing. Okay, so $3,061.80 is the new value after one year. So it lost a pretty good amount of money, yeah? Mm -hmm. A little over a thousand bucks. Yeah. Okay. So then it says, you, um, graph this model. And we talked about that yesterday. You just make a table and then you make the rough graph for me. Okay. And then it says, use the graph to estimate when the value of the snowmobile will be $2,500. So if I don't have a perfect graph, we talked about that yesterday too. How can I solve that algebraically? Plug in 25. To the Y, right? And you leave that T up there. And I said, we won't be doing that yet because we don't know how to solve that yet. Yes? Um, okay. Okay. Because you're going to have to do logarithmic functions with it, and we'll talk about that later in this chapter.